watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 131. Use Source Tree for Better X Pages Source Control. Many bottles of beer were killed in the making of this video. Okay, uh, before we get into it, just a couple uh, Notes and Nine resources. I've got, you know, this little website, notesandnine.com. There's uh, about 130 other videos on there if you're interested, and most of them are X pages. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for, which I would not blame you, I've got this index on notesandnine.site, which is a little, little out of date. I need to get some of the more recent videos up there. I've got a, uh, I've got a roadmap. I should put the link in here. I've got this like um, mind map. If you search for like a uh, notes nine episodes episode guide or something like that, you'll find that. That's actually uh, probably a pretty good thing to do if you're looking for older shows. And of course, I've got the cheat sheet website, xpageschcheatsheet.com. Okay. Source control, what we're talking about. Source control, uh, I'm not going to get too into um, all the back history of source control and stuff, uh, but you want to use it. If you're not using it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, it's not just for teams. Solo developers should use it also. I use it in my personal projects. Uh, you want to use it. It's, 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 now it's too easy not to use it. There, there is no excuse anymore, really. Um, you do not need a server, so if, if you just don't want to put your corporate source code out there uh, and you're kind of working by yourself or so you just leave it on your hard drive you can back up your hard drive uh, so then it, it is safe and you can do reversions and stuff like that so it's nice to have a server there are choices out there the uh, bitbucket and um uh, github are probably the, the two biggest that at least that i'm aware of uh, what does it give you it gives you branching and merging so you now can easily get to uh, different code streams for their, your production code your your qa or your test code uh, you're in development code, even if you don't have a QA server, so it's still nice to have the code stream out there. Okay, so so what does that mean? It means if you're work, if you have a, a rolled out application, and you're working on a bunch of new changes, and the boss says, "Hey, you need to come in and fix this application right away," you don't want this the the stuff that you're developing to get in early, but you still want to fi fix you know the the production code. So what this is all about is you could, you could you can now easily just say oh, okay I'm gonna switch my designer to the gold code stream um, the production code and and put my fix in there without risking all this new stuff of getting in there and then and then simply you know you make one click and then you're back into your development code stream so that's what that, that's what the payoff is that's why you want to do this um, it's, it's just a great way to live um, and, and quite honestly, the rest of the world, you know, the Linux kernel and Mozilla and even small projects, they use source control and we should also. Uh, again, there's no reason not to. Okay, now a, a couple disclaimers or notes about this video. This was actually a very painful video for, for me to make uh, because it took me a while to figure this out. And I got a lot of help in figuring it out, but I was doing some things out of order and I don't know, I must have taken maybe 18 attempts over the last three days to try and get this done. Um, so I actually haven't fully used this much in the, my day-to-day -day job. Uh, a lot of the guidance I've gotten uh, from, from Declan, um, and, and he's kind of starting with this also. So this is what we believe to be the case. This is what I believe to be the case. Um, if you find that this is not the case, please post it. If you have any uh, suggestions or so, let us know. Uh, we suspect that it's going to work the way I'm going to demonstrate on the video, but we haven't lived with it in production uh, for a long time, knowing that this is how it, it does work. Uh, some other, some of the other X pagers uh, have been using Source Tree for quite a long time, and mostly with GitHub rather than Mercurial, but that really shouldn't matter. Um, and they've been very successful with it. So again, just just watch the video. Know that it's very early on in in my uh, pseudo understanding of it. But I believe that, that I do have it nailed down, and I actually know what I'm talking about. But uh, you do get what you pay for, which was nothing. So, just so you know. Okay, so I can't go any further without some big thanks. Um, I want to thank Nathan Freeman. Uh, I had a go-to meeting with him a couple days ago when I was struggling with some conceptual things about this. And, and he very graciously took, took a, a fair amount of time to... Um, uh, 
show me around and, and kind of get me on the right track, which didn't quite get me on the right track, but he got me closer on the right track. And I do want to thank Russ Mayer. Russ came on with, with like five minutes notice, and, and I actually recorded a session with him. Uh, I hope to have that be the demo for Notes and Nine when I thought I had understanding of what I was talking about, and I was going to have Russ be on to like ask questions and stuff like that. And it turned out that, in, a, in fact, I did not know what I was talking about. Um, but Russ tried, and, and I hope I didn't screw him up too much. But I, I did appreciate his his willingness to come on the show, and and I had to thank uh, Declan Lynch. He's my he's my boss. He's my friend. Uh, he's Yoda. Um, there's few things that he doesn't know, and um, he really kind of put me over the top on this and took some time to uh, we we worked together and with mostly him telling me, but we did the brainstorm it a little bit. But but he gave me a lot of help in understanding this as as our development team is going to move over to Source Tree for this. And I do want to thank him uh, very much for that assistance. Okay, with all that stuff being said, let's go to the demo. Okay, so what we have here is a, a pretty pristine copy of Windows 8.1 in a, in a virtual machine uh, running off my Mac. Not that that matters. And um, I've got a very clean copy of Notes, 9, Notes and Design 9.0.1 on it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is if, you, if you've seen any of the old source control shows and some of the blog posts out there, what we had you do is go to File, Application, Install, and you would install some merc Mercurial binaries and some like hooks uh, for Mercurial. And maybe if you, if you were a Git person, and I never did Git, uh, but there's a project eGit on OpenNTF, so, you, so that probably came into play here. You're not going to do that anymore. No Mercurial installed to DDE, no Git or eGit. That project, I believe, is, is pretty much dead. It's, it's not needed anymore. So we're going to leave this blank. Okay. What we are going to do is we're going to download the Source Tree app. It's a third-party app. So if you come to your browser and go to sourcetreeapp.com, it's free. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like. You can see the, the forks and stuff like that and you know all sorts of good stuff about it so me being a, a at least attempting to be a good podcaster i've already downloaded this to my machine um i said to find it okay so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna minimize that is we're gonna double click this install we're gonna say next and i don't like this x86 directory i just never have um so i'm just gonna shorten that up to get a little closer to the root and we're going to say next, we're going to install that. We can say yes. Of that. Okay, that was pretty quick, but it's not done yet. Okay, so now the first thing it asks you, it says Git is not found. So what it wants to do is it wants to download an embedded version of Git inside Source Tree. And we're going to go ahead and say yes. We're not actually going to use it in the demo, but um, uh, I focus on using Mercurial because that's what we use at the day job, and that's what Bitbucket uses, one of the things. But a lot of people like GitHub. And there are projects on GitHub, so this would allow you to pull down something from GitHub. I, I assume I haven't done it yet, but I'm sure it would work. So it's just installing um, the embedded Git. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for Mercurial. And this kind of is one of the reasons why we don't need to put that piece in Domino Designer anymore. Um, because it's, it's all going to be controlled through Source Tree. Okay, when that's done, now this came up with um, my full name, and this is already in there. I, I don't know where it's coming from, but after 16 or 17 attempts at this video, uh, I just go with it now. So we're just going to agree with that and say next. We're going to use PuTTY because everybody loves PuTTY. We don't need an SSH key. Yours might say something about using a global ignore list or so. If it does, just take the default. I'm not sure why that's not coming up for me anymore, uh, but it's not. Um, I happen to have a Bitbucket account, so I'm going to put in my name and password for for later, if I to type that right. Um, or if you had a GitHub account, or you might have no account. For for instance, we have a, a Redmine server uh, at the day job that, that has Mercurial on it, so you don't need to do anything here. You can still connect to your internal servers and stuff, but I'm going to fill that in because I, because I have it. Okay, and this is Source Tree, and we're not going to touch it yet. The next step is we're going to go to our file manager and into documents and we're going to make a new folder in here 
we're going to call this source control. And this is where all our projects are going to live. So it's really going to be kind of easy to back up and move around if, if you need to. Though, of course, if you engage a server, then like Bitbucket, then it's kind of backed up there anyway. So we're going to go into source control. We're going to make two more folders. First one will be for Git. And the next one we'll call HG for any Mercurial projects, because HG and Mercurial are synonymous. So all our Mercurial projects are going to live under here, and the Git projects are going to live under here. Okay, now we're going to make, in this demo, we're going to make a, a demo application. So each application should have its own subfolder in here. Now an application, it's kind of like the Xwork server, it could be one NTF file, it could be multiple NTF files. Okay, so we'll call this demo one app. Okay, so I could have a, a customer management folder, I could have a, an inventory folder, whatever. But inside it, we will end up putting more than one, we could end up putting more than one NTF in here. We're only going to do one for this video, um, so, so that'll make it easy. Now, before we move on with that, we're going to minimize that. And now we're going to take that folder and we're going to turn it into a repository. We're going to come into Clone New. And now if we're pulling down an existing project from Bitbucket, which hopefully we'll see uh, today or in a soon show, um, this is what we would do. We would clone it. But we're going to create a new one. And it's not going to be Git. We're going to use Mercurial. And we're going to pick our folder. Source Control HD Demo 1 App. We're going to select this folder and say Create. Okay, now what did that do? That made this little folder in here, HG. So this is where all the change logs, all the reversion, all the commits, whatever is going to live inside here. This is the history for this application. Okay, this is important. Now, inside the, the same folder, as a as a sibling to .hg, we're going to make the last folder we're going to make, because it's a little easier to make it here than in, in um, Download Designer, um, demo1 ODP for the on-disk project. So the on-disk project is going to live right in here. And again, you could have more than one on-disk projects. And we actually do do that in the day job. It's going to be killer once we get that going. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that. And, and well, keep this in mind, though. Anything you put in this demo one, this demo one app folder, is under source control. It could be a notepad file, it could be a text file, it could be anything, and then you can just start tracking your changes, and then we'll put it up to um, you know whatever source control server if you're using, if you choose to use one. So there's there's no, there's nothing really fancy going on here. Okay, so now we've got source tree uh, kind of set up, and we're gonna come back to um, Domino Designer. And we're going to create an application. New application. Local. Leave it local. Okay. This is um this is not something you want to use with replication. So we make it NTF. It, the best way to do this, the absolute best practice, is to work locally, and then use source control to move your source around from different teammates and stuff like that, team members. Um, uh, but do not do replication here. That's that's at least the best practice we found. Some other people do other things. Now, from your template, of course, you can refresh the design of a QA database, like a QA server, or the production database, or however you want to do that. But this is what we have found to be best. Okay, so we're going to make this shell of a database. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this under source control. And we're going to go to team development, set up source control for this application. You get probably get this screen here we're gonna just ignore it and we're gonna give it a project name now usually the project name I usually give pretty much the same name uh, but that's not required but what you do want to do is do not use this default location okay we want to put this in the ODP folder that we created so that was under documents source control HG demo one ODP okay that's where the on-disk project will live. Okay. Now if we come in here, here it is. And if we actually went into it, here's our flat file. Okay. So we are now cooking with gas. Now, it, it took a while to, to 
make this demo and get to this point, and there's there was a lot of things back and forth, and Declan finally found the best setting ever in a download designer for this instance. So we're going to go to File Preferences, uh, General. Oops. Okay, then under General, there's Workspace. And we're going to turn this bad boy on right here. Refresh automatically. Now, there is a big caveat here. Uh, Dominant Designer is built on, I believe, Eclipse 3.2. This, we, we believe, or Declan believes, because uh, everything I know I learned from him, um, came in, was introduced in 3.4. So this was backported by somebody, whether it was IBM or not, we're not sure. Um, but in our initial test, this seemed to work fine. And I'll, I'll show you what that does in a little bit. Uh, but this this is huge. So you do want to turn that on, and, and hopefully it's just going to work fine as, as, as expected. Okay, so we're going to apply that and say OK. Okay, so now we've made our database. We have our flat file. Again, in the old days, you would go into Team and you would do Share Project. Well, you don't need to do that anymore because basically what's going on here is Domino Designer does not know a thing about source control. You're not using source control pieces of this other than just simply creating the on-disk project. And then the fact that it's, it lives on your hard drive, Source Tree is going to pick that up and take care of it for you. So if we go back to Source Tree and we go in our working copy, it's already here, you can see all the files that, that it's fa found pending. And there's the, the log of uncommitted change. So we're going to just go right now and just do a quick commit and get get that in there. Now, when you're a developer, you know, you're learning a new programming language, you must start with a hello world application. It's, it's, it's the law. In the source controlled world, you must start with an initial commit. And if not, people will make fun of you. I've seen it done. It's not pretty. Okay, so just your first one, always just do, you, you should probably spell it right. Because people made fun of me for that too. Um, so anyway, we do commit. Okay, so now at least we at least have this one commit and, and it's it's good to go. Uh, we can push it up now, but I, we're not talking to a server yet. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Now, since we're not using Domino Designer for source control, you would probably think that we'd use all these buttons up here, especially commit, pull and push, and then the branch merge and tag. And you're, you'd be you'd be half right. Uh, we're gonna use like this side of it, but we're not gonna use branch merge and tag. Okay, the whole point of what we're doing here is to get to this thing here, HG flow, which is kind of like a wizard that does branch management for us and automatic merging of code. So we're gonna click on this. And we're just going to take the defaults here. And it, what it's going to do is it's going to create a production branch called default. And this is going to equate to your gold code. Okay, what's been promoted, what is uh, what the users have, that's the, the live real stuff. And then there's going to also be a branch called develop. And that's going to equate to your like QA code, stuff you might have the users test. So not even fully your, you know, the code you're working on. Uh, but you know it's it's a little little higher than that, so we're gonna have this develop branch, and then we're going to as needed make feature release and hotfix branches. So let's click OK, and we're gonna say yes. Okay, now you can't really see too much from the graph just yet, but we're gonna deal with that in a minute. So again, HG Flow is going to do all this branch management for us. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a feature. We click on HG Flow and we're going to start a new feature branch. Feature 1. Okay, so branch created feature 1. Now we're going to come back here to our application. And and what that setting did, what that setting did under this this preferences of the or was it the general workspace refresh automatically, is that makes it go both ways. So um, Domino Designer should have automatically updated the on disk project and the application to the feature branch, and we'll see that 
in a minute. Let me get rid of this navigator here. Okay, so we're going to make an X page, and we'll call it Feature 1. And no, I'm not really going to do any fancy coding here, other than saying, here's our X page, that's Feature 1. Okay, so we've made an X page. We're going to pretend it's the coolest X page in the world, and you're just happy to even witness it. Okay, or maybe not. Okay, so once that's done, we come back to Source Tree, and see our automatic updated, un there's uncommitted changes here. Okay, so we are going to commit these changes. And it tells us exactly what files have been touched. Finished. Feature 1. And we're going to say commit. Okay, so it is a little hard to read until you, until you get used to it, but we'll see it in a couple minutes here. Um, so we're going to now go to HGFlow. And say that the, and finish this feature. Now it is bet we think it is best to keep the features small. You know, commit often, use small features. Uh, that's probably going to be better in the long run, we think. And you can see this preview of the the map, the flow chart. It's it's starting to make. So there's some branching going on. I'm going to say okay. And what's that done is we had you know our main trunk here, and then we branched off to do a feature, and then by finishing it, it moved it back into. Uh, basically what this develop trunk okay so what that means is if we come in here we've got feature one now if we switch to our default branch and we're gonna just ignore this for the moment If we switch to our default branch and then come back here, it's gone, right? Because this is the gold code. We we didn't put it in the gold code code yet. And I got to say something else. Like it's like a tongue twister for me. Um, so again, let's let's come back here and go back to develop. Now we want to work on our part that we're developing, and that is going to update in half a second. Oh, say so they did. Okay, it's been a long couple of days. Okay, so now it's back. Now we're in the develop section. Okay, so let's let's do this again. We're gonna make another feature. And it knows to start by default. Start off the development branch. Okay, now we're gonna come back here, and we're gonna make another page. Feature 2. Okay. And let's go back to Source Tree, and we're going to get the uncommitted changes. We can see them here, and we're going to commit them. And then we're going to close this feature. And here's the key to life. Here's one of the things that took me a while to miss. You must commit everything before you change your branches. Okay, otherwise, it just doesn't know what to do with your code. So we're going to hit commit and say finished feature 2. We're going to say yes. Okay, now it's still hanging out here. So it's technically like in this feature branch, but it's not moved back into the develop branch fully yet. So we're going to merge that in by saying finish feature. We're going to say okay. So now we've done two, okay? But now, if we come back to the default branch, they're gone because we haven't promoted them to production yet. So let's do that now. Then we're going to go to back to source tree, back to HG flow. And we're going to start a new release, and I just call this point oh one. And I'm not even going to code right now in this branch. I'm just going to open it, and I'm going to close it. And I'm just going to finish the release. And you can see that this graph here. It's going to basically pair off this code and move anything that's that needs to in the develop branch and also put it into the default or the, the gold branch. Okay, now we have a kind of a little busier chart going on here. Okay, so here's the production branch. You can see we're not, I'm sorry. Here's the production branch here. 
and you can see in this case now the colors do change depending on what happens so but in here this was like the develop branch that spawned this feature and then this feature and then this release okay if we come back here they're back we're in the default branch and they're back okay so now let's let's go through this again now watch this this is where it kind of gets kind of cool let's say we're going to work on feature three and we're going to come back here and do new x page feature three and while we're working on this x page and we're happy as clams we get a call from the boss there's something wrong with feature one okay now we're not done with feature three we have a lot more work to do but feature one needs to be addressed immediately so what we're gonna do to to deal with this is we're going to actually go to um we're gonna commit I say I almost did it again always commit before you go here um, we're gonna commit where we're at commit where we're at to this stage of the game and then we're going to come in back to HG flow and we're gonna and we're gonna finish this feature do we have to finish it we might not need to finish it I'm gonna finish it now because I really want to get this demo out we're gonna finish this feature for the time being and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a hotfix so we're going to go into HG flow and say start a new hotfix and now it knows to do this off the met the default branch fix one okay so now feature three never made it to the gold code never made it to production so when we come back here we should not see feature three and we do not Russ it's working now just so you know okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into feature one and and maybe both pages sucked so we're gonna fix both pages because the boss does like when things work and maybe we even need to make a new one hot fix one fix one okay this is our hot fix so when we're done with that we come back to source tree and we're going to see some uncommitted changes appear and we're going to commit these changes and you should have better comments what i'm putting in um you know a little more technical i, I guess but that's you, you get you get what i'm going with here i hope and we're going to commit this And then we're going to go to HG Flow and we're going to finish our hotfix. And this hotfix is going to go into develop and default at the same time. This is why we're using HG Flow. It does all this for us. Merging is a pain in the butt manually. Trust me on that. You should have seen all the branches I had in some of my stuff. Okay, so now if we come back to. Well, let's see, where are we? We're in develop. So if we're in develop, we've got our hotfix. We've got all the changes we made, and if we switch back to default, we've got the hotfix. Let's see it. You have to give it a couple seconds. So it just dropped off that feature three because that never made it to production. Okay, it's brilliant, you know. So that this is this is good stuff to be able to just. You know, if you've got a lot of work in place that that is not ready to go in, and you, but you still need to make some changes to your live your, your production code, this is what this does. Okay. Now, I, I would I would think in theory we we didn't have to close that feature to make that hot fix if you didn't want to. Uh, you know, so you have to kind of play with this, and your mileage may vary on a couple of things. But this is this is how it works. This is this is great stuff. Um, gosh, I never thought what I was going to do at the end of this demo because I never got to the end before. But I think that's that that gets the drift. Let me just show you a, a couple other things. Now, 
that we, we don't need to go into Package Explorer anymore um, and, and involve ourselves with this. If you have the Mercurial binaries installed here, um, if, if they are installed, then you could see the current branch inside here. Um, and again, I don't recommend you do that install but anymore, but, but if you do have it installed for whatever reason, um, what you might have to do then is you might have to manually re refresh this automatically um, if this um, preference doesn't kick in. So again, if, if, you, if you're not doing what, what, what I'm suggesting you do, then, then you just have to try a couple things out uh, as needed. Another thing I'll, I'll show you, if you do want to install the Mercurial binaries for some reason, um, if you go to C, uh, Users, Leedy, or your name, it wouldn't be Leedy, um, and then there's a hidden folder here, App Data, Local, Atlassian source tree, and then here's the git and hg local. Okay, and here's the actual embedded hg file. So if you did for some reason want to mess with those Mercurial binaries inside Domino Designer, you would need to point it to this file in here. So just keep that in mind. But now that um, Declan found this 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 automatic refresh feature, um, I, I don't think that's needed at all. So this looks like it's going to just keep on going, and it's going to be a great thing. Oh, I guess we should talk about the server um, while we're at it. So let's come in here to Bitbucket. Let's see how that works. And we're going to make a new repository. And we're going to create a repository. And we're going to call this Demo1. And here's why I like Bitbucket. You want to know why I like Bitbucket so much? Watch this. Watch this. X pages as a, as a language. I, they put that in there because I asked them to. When I, when I asked them to, it took them maybe 40 minutes until X pages showed up here. I don't know. I, I like that. So now I'm loyal to Bitbucket. So we're going to create this repository. And I'm going to say I'm starting from scratch. And it's going to give me this URL. We're going to just say next. Oh, we don't need that. So source tree. We're gonna, we already have a repository. And we're going to click on settings. We're going to add a remote path for this. We'll call this Bitbucket. We'll say OK. OK. So now you can even see it here. So now we can push. And it's going to push everything up to this point. And there is an option, when you do your commits, there's an option to push right away, too, so you can just check that box. Okay, so now if we come back to um, Bitbucket and click on Source. Oh, here it is. You can get to it right from in here. And here's your access P code. Okay, now let's say, let's let's... Let's just be crazy here. Let's delete this. Here it is. And we'll delete the on disk stuff. And we'll delete this. Delete on disk. Delete here. Which is already deleted, really. But we'll say this and hope it doesn't, doesn't like me. We'll close that. So, so it's gone. All right, it's deleted. So how do we build it back? Well, we're going to, oops, I probably shouldn't have closed source tree all the way. And I do hate Windows 8.1 with a passion. Um, so what we're going to do now to bring it back, let's say you're a new team member to an existing project. We're going to click on clone new, and we're going to put in that same URL that we got in this clone section where before we did the create new repository, now we're doing clone. And the destination path. Oop, see, now I don't have that, so we have to make that thing again. Yeah, hold on a second. Let's I'm do that. So we just have to set that directory structure back up. New folder, demo one app. 
And I think that's all we need because the, the HG and the stuff underneath it should come down to this directory. So we're going to now select that directory and say clone. Now we're going to click on log history. There it is. Documents, source control, HG, demo one. There's what we were expecting to see. Here's our on disk project. So now to get this in the Domino Designer, we can say, oop, we go to Package Explorer, and we can say Import, and under General Existing Projects in the Workspace, we're going to browse oops, to Documents, HG, to this guy. Yep. You want to pick the on disk project. Don't pick this thing. Pick the on disk project. That's important. And we'll say, fit. we don't want to copy. Don't copy that in the workspace. That'll, that'll ruin your day. Okay. And there's your flat file. So now we right click on it. Team development associated with new NSF. Temp demo one, whatever you want to call it. Dot NTF. Bada bing. You're now developing from the thing you pulled down from Bitbucket. Okay, and again, it's we're, why isn't feature three here? Because we never finished that branch. We never put that back into um, production. So if we make a a release, you release, and we say point, I don't know if it's 0203, I kind of forget. So if we say that, and then if we finish this release right away, and if we come back here, feature three is here. Okay, now you can do coding in that, that release branch. Okay, and, and an example of that would be is if you roll something out to develop and, and they found some problems with it, rather than making a feature, you can kind of basically, you know, just put your changes in there. But again, just remember, commit before you touch this button here. That's what really killed me the last two days is not realizing that. Okay, but that is how you bring down uh, your application or another project, you know, there's more and more open source projects um, that are available on GitHub and stuff for, for X pages and, and Domino. Um, that's how you put it in the Domino Designer. And I really, really hope uh, you like that. And I hope you use source control. If you have questions, please post them on to um, uh, my blog or, or maybe Stack Overflow would be better in some cases because there's a lot of people starting to use this now. Uh, we can probably get some answers for you. Um, and uh, good luck to you. And that's the demo. I, I hope that made sense to you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, basically everything I know is now in the demo. So just rewind the video and that will probably help you. Or not, you can you can email me or, or post the comment. I'll at least attempt to help you. Uh, there's always Stack Overflow and, and, and whatnot there too. So uh, with that being said, here's my contact information. And I thank you for your time.